Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of The Road To. Tonight I am joined by the lovely Kirsty of the Liverpool Weaving Company who is also known as the Warhammer Princess. She took part in hosting her very own series Lady Hammer last year and tonight I get the pleasure of speaking to Kirsty right now and I'm just about to send that request off. And she's going to join us for a lovely chat. So, if you bear with me two seconds. Hello everybody joining. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was us in a couple of seconds. I hope you're all having a good night. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm here. Brilliant. <laughs> everybody, this is Kirsty. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a few people trickling in now, so it's absolutely lovely to see people are joining. Everybody's sending their hellos, saying that they've missed you. Um, and again, thank you, everybody, who's joining in tonight. But for anybody who does not know you, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. I, I just wanted to check first. I know we um, we talked about it briefly before we started, but um, is everything okay with uh, with my video? Because I'm outside in my studio, as you can see. But uh, I'm using 4G. I'm not using Wi-Fi. So I just is that is everything okay? And you can hear me, all right? Yes, definitely. Lee. I can hear you, and I can see you. Perfect. Fantastic, amazing. Okay, well, I'm Kirsty, and um, I run the Liverpool Weaving Company. Um, I've been running the Liverpool Weaving Company for, it's been since 2018. Um, it's funny, I was, I was trying to count back the years. I think last year wasn't a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've been a textile designer for 12 years now. Excellent. So for anybody who, who doesn't maybe follow along the Liverpool Weaving Company, could you tell us a little bit more about, about your business? Yeah, sure. So um, when I talk about my business, I kind of talk about it in like an A, B and C format just to make it a bit easier. So um, A is the commission weave inside of my company. Um, so I've got a plethora of clients. And I work with all sorts of people who come to me with design ideas and they'll want something weaving for them. May that be um, a fashion company or, or an interior company or even like a small yield farmer with like a small flock of say alpacas or rare breed of sheep and they want that um, that yarn, that fleece weaving into blankets or scarves. Um, I work with fashion brands as well to make um, more, more, I mean what I do is really, it's really quite laborious so um, more like high-end fashion companies um, so I do a lot of work with them and that's what's on the loom behind me but I can't actually show you in any more detail because I've been sworn to secrecy by my client. <laughs> so you can distance um, and then um, I'd say B of my company is my teaching of workshops I love teaching workshops um, it's been interesting over the last year adapting to that and working in different ways uh, but I love teaching workshops and just being able to get out there into the community and teach people things about uh, like what, what I'm passionate about so which which is weaving so um, so I teach weaving workshops um, Occasionally go into universities and lecture there too about textile design, um, or trend forecasting, um, and then C of my business, which I've not really done too much of lately, um, is designing my my own collection, um, which I thought would be when I started my business. I thought that would be a much more prevalent part of my business, but it's actually not been um, because I I have one loom, so. If, um, if a client comes to me with a project, then I kind of sideline my own things. So I'm um, at the moment, uh, more often than not, weaving other people's designs instead of my own designs. But I hope to get there. I'll get there someday. <laughs> There's lots of people in the chat already saying hello. And obviously they have pointed out behind you the weave that you're working on, which is top secret. But so everybody can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of see it. Not too, um, not too close up. I suppose you can, uh, you can kind of see the types of colours, but you can't see the pattern in too much detail, so, yeah. <laughs> I'll just do a big shout out to the Crips over there who's joined in. Hello. It's lovely Hi. to see you here. Um, so, 
You've mentioned about the Liverpool weaving business and what it is, and it's got three different parts. And that's probably progressed over like a, a period of time, right? Yeah. So how did you first get into weaving? Okay, so um, this was back um, in 2009. That was when I started my textile design degree at Chelsea College of Art. So um, going back to there, I always knew I wanted to do something creative, but I wasn't quite sure at that point what. So in my first year at Chelsea, we did all of these different blocks where we tried different creative skills. So um, knitwear, um, CAD, which was like more, more print orientated design, um, embroidery, which I was terrible at, um, and weaving. And I just, the thing that I really liked about weaving is that I'm a bit of a geek. We already know this because <laughs> of how we met. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. And I just, I, yeah, what well, I've always okay. loved weaving is um, there's much more of a, there's quite a mathematical structure to weaving. Um, there's lots of formula to work out the density of the cloth, for instance. Um, and there's quite a lot of maths that goes into weaving. So uh, I guess the technical side drew me in. So I, I just, I've always really liked the structure of, of weaving. So um that was what I chose to do. So um, just, yeah, all, all went from there. Um, just absolutely. The, the first bit of weaving I ever did, by the way, was terrible. Um, I think that just made me more determined to crack it. Um, I did this horrible, it was bamboo yarn. I didn't know a lot about yarns at that point. It all just snapped. And it just made me more determined to keep on at it. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I graduated Chelsea in 2012 um and then after that i worked for a few design studios in london um i worked for designers guild which i really enjoyed um and did a lot of work with uh with tartans and tweeds so that led me to look for design opportunities further afield and that was how i kind of graduated my journey up north and then back down south and now i'm here <laughs> <laughs> so we we have um here and that we've got a very similar background so i did um fashion marketing at university um and specialized in textiles too so when i saw that you were in textiles i was like oh, not only are you in a warhammer you you've got a textiles background too i was like oh my god i've got a neil kirsty down for a conversation <laughs> um and so one of the things that i wanted to ask is You've got your own business and you're obviously really passionate about textiles. What was the moment that you thought, you know what, I want to do this as a business. I want my own business and this is literally the path I want to get on. I think uh, I think it was kind of an organic progression um, because after I'd, uh, after I'd worked in London, um, I really wanted to learn more about tweeds and tartans. And I was working with, um, with woolens and tweeds and tartans in design studios in London. I was just like, I just want to learn more from the source. So I got myself a job at a mill in Aberdeenshire and I moved to Aberdeen. Um, the mill was halfway between Aberdeen and Peterhead. And I moved there and I was a tweed and tartan designer at that mill for a couple of years and um, I, I became involved in, uh, in in a charity that was based in Shetland so and it was a textile charity so I started doing bits of work with, with people in Shetland uh, locals in Shetland and I thought why not just move a little bit further north so <laughs> for those of you who um, who don't know where the Shetland Islands are they're uh, a small group of islands it's still it's still the UK it's still in Britain um, but they're right up there practically by Norway um, I moved myself to a tiny island with only 900 people on it and that was where I co-ran a tweed company so um, I worked in Shetland for quite a few years I've been a design manager at Bristol Weaving Mill obviously I moved back down for that <laughs> it wasn't remote working uh, and then while I was I loved Bristol Weaving Mill and I love being design manager there but sometimes I feel like you move somewhere and it just doesn't quite click and Bristol's a great city and I had a fantastic time working at the mill met loads of great people loads of like my, my two ex-bosses were fantastic but after working for other people for 10 years, I, I just kept thinking, I, I want to do this for myself. You know, I want to set this up for myself. And it was getting to the point where I'd lived away from Liverpool for, yeah, like pr practically coming on for 10 years. And um, 
I had, I had a bit of a call, I had a bit of a call into home. So I was thinking I, I really want to do what I love, but where I'm from and being able to facilitate doing that was kind of impossible because there used to be a lot of mills around Lancashire and Merseyside. Um, you know, we're talking you know, like 50, 60 years ago. The nearest mills really to me here now are Lancashire, uh, West Yorkshire. There's really not a lot around in Merseyside in terms of weaving. So I thought, why not it be me? So here I am. Excellent. You know, what? that's a fantastic journey that you've been on. I had, I had inclinations that you'd worked for other people before. Um, and I follow your Instagram account and I see that you do do work with designers and stuff. But it's really excellent to hear that you set up your own business and you're representing Liverpool and you're really making a movement down there in the Reven and textiles industry that's amazing thank you um the bit well there's design studio that I've got here um I'm Liverpool's only micro mill so there's other people weaving in Liverpool um there's definitely people weaving um I know a couple of fantastic women who weave in Liverpool um but just not on a more um not on like quite quite the same type of industrial scale like this type of loom um it, you wouldn't you wouldn't find in liverpool or, or the merseyside area um I, I do know loads of talented weavers but the, the weaving on much more of a small scale um kathy wright as well who's a fantastic liverpool weaver and um, she runs workshops so she's more of a teacher and she um she does lovely weaver scarf workshops and um dyeing workshops she dyes yarn stuff like that so there are other people around it's just a bit more niche yeah. So I had a question come in off Joey from Instagram and he said, apart from the Shetland Islands, is there anywhere else around the world that you get your inspiration from? Oh, that's quite a hard one, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, I take inspiration from all sorts of places. Like when I was based in Shetland, uh, I used to I used to weave a lot of fabrics around an idea that I called the Hidden Coast. So looking at landscape you know you can look at a landscape really quickly and you can say you know the grass is green the sand's yellow the sea's blue whatever um but i like to do this thing called the hidden coast where i'd really look into the depths of nature um i, I used to be fascinated by seaweed um anything grown on rocks barnacles um and i just love the idea of looking closer to things and you can do that practically anywhere um I've been doing a little bit of research into Liverpool and surrounding areas. Um, it's been a little bit more difficult because of COVID, but I'm um, getting out there and looking at Liverpool's you know, cityscape in a little bit more depth. So I think you can draw inspiration from so many places, but I absolutely love going to mills. Um, and I'm a really outdoorsy person. I've got two dogs and a little one. So uh, always going for walks, which is something I love. So I've always got my phone out. I'm always snapping photos. Um, I've got this massive archive on my phone of like weave inspiration. So um, one of the main places I've never been to, um, it's not so much to draw inspiration from there, but I'd absolutely love to go to Peru. Um, the women who weave there are just insanely skilled and i love scrolling through all the weave pages on instagram and looking at that um my brother's been to peru and he he sent he sent me so many amazing photos while he was there so yeah I, i'd love to go to peru um that sounds but, amazing yeah 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 oh also actually my um think just thinking actually of places that i find quite inspiring and um, my brother went to um went to myanmar um about a year before COVID happened, and he got me these amazing textile pieces. Um, I'll hold them up, actually. The colours um, are beautiful. They're just completely exquisite, and they're, they're so fine as well. Like, I don't know if you can see how fine those threads are. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just inspired, really, by, by anyone who is working in this type of way, um, just really hands-on. Without, without any type of computer-aided assistance. Um, just, just fantastic people who've had skills passed down through generations. I just find that completely breathtaking and a massive source of inspiration. Was there a point when you started um, your process in the textiles that you were like, um, you've had a point where you were thought, you know what, this technique isn't necessarily for you and you've had to switch to a new technique? At the moment, actually, it's interesting you should say that. At the moment, I'm weaving linen um, and all different types of yarn, all different compositions. They all take their own 
kind of their own creature in a way. Um, linen weaves differently to wool, to cotton. Um, you'll find that different fibres, if they're natural or synthetic, have different types of what's called take up as well. So you might find a natural fiber is a little bit more springy in its twist. Um, and at the moment I'm using linen, which is a really stiff yarn. It's really stiff. It's not very robust. Uh, well, it is, it is robust, but it's not, it, there's, it's not very forgiving. Um, there's not a lot of elasticity to it. So I was trying at the very start of the project to look for ways to make the linen tension more. Um, I've um, got a friend who's a linen expert, so she gave me loads of advice and I find myself using different techniques that I've not before. So this has been like a bit of a learning curve for me, even though I've been doing this for such a long time, um, there's still always curveballs in the world of weave. So I've actually found that spraying linen with water makes it a little bit more bouncy when you're starting off weaving so i've essentially been like cultivating my warp and spraying it as i go which has been quite interesting um but yeah I, at the start i mean i, I couldn't i can't give up so uh because it, it's a big project that i've just started for um one of my italian clients but i'm just, just a bit like at the start i was thinking oh How's this going to go? The the first 15 metres of it, I'm doing 150 metres for the commission total, but um, the first 15 metres, it's actually gone really, really nice. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm really happy about it because at the start I was thinking, oh, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to go as quickly or as smoothly as I thought it would. I thought it'd be a lot more, um, a lot more hard work, a little bit more laborious. It's not been too bad, so... <laughs> it goes well with the question that um, uh, Lady Maya rose, which we, we obviously know quite well. And she um, asks, what is the largest weave you've ever done? Okay, so, oh, I mean, in width, because of the capability of my loom, you can see here, um, my weaving width is 48 inches wide um and i can't weave wider than that just because that's how wide my loom is um but when i worked in shetland i was weaving with a 60 inch loom um and that was a huge project um that was for chanel actually and that was kind of a fair isle style pattern um and it was it was a long long project and the fabric was very intricate so that is probably the most difficult um, type of fabric that I've ever done. Uh, that that was that was lengthy. Um, I was still in the studio. Um, I seen that my auntie joined a minute ago, actually, and she'll remember because she she was visiting me in Shetland while I was doing the project, and I was like still weaving at like nine o'clock at night. I think she, and she was probably thinking, "Can you spend some time with me? I flew to Shetland from Harrogate. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the studio and chill." <laughs> <laughs> so um you've mentioned another part of of the business where you do a lot of workshops one of the questions that i wanted to ask you is for anybody who's interested in getting into weaving have you got any advice for people how to do that yeah i mean there's loads of if you're not in the northwest area um where i teach i have to plug myself a little bit um if you're not in the northwest area um there's amazing there's loads of fantastic weavers throughout the country that do weaving workshops um i do weaving workshops around the northwest and i go to north wales as well i go like as far over as carnarthen and as north as like harrogate ways so um I, I cover quite a large region with with the with the weaving workshops i do online workshops too um but for anyone who's in different parts of the country uh, just fa find your nearest person. There's so many talented people throughout the country who who weave fantastically, um, and as well, there's so much stuff like on like online now. And like I always used to talk about it when we uh, did our lady hammer chats. And there's so many, there's so much on online. Like there's so many fantastic resources, and you see it growing all the time now. I don't have, um, I've got Instagram and Facebook, but I've seen there's loads of really talented weavers doing tutorials on TikTok, for instance. So just really accessible information. Um, so 
yeah, 100%. Just have a little look. There's so many interesting things, even on, you know, YouTube, TikTok. There's, there's loads of stuff online. I think just perseverance as well, because like I said, like my first weaving wasn't very good. Uh, um, I think per perseverance is key. Like when you're trying any new craft, for anyone who's knitted for the first time, even if we're talking about Warhammer painting a mini, you know, you see all of these like amazing models on Instagram and they're people who've been doing this type of thing for years. Um, just stick with it and just keep practicing. So I think it's a really good opportunity for me to kind of dip in there and do a little segue on uh, your other hobbies. I know you've mentioned um, obviously Warhammer painting, um, but could you tell us a little bit more about your other hobbies outside of the Liverpool Weaving Company? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we we met through Warhammer, didn't we? Um, we did. And, like, I, I, I miss painting. I haven't. I've got to be quite honest. I haven't done any painting for quite a long time now. Um, it's been it's been a really it's been a really long time since I painted last. Um, and I feel like at the moment, which is kind of a bad thing, because I always talk about, um, especially in my weaving workshops, I talk about like positive mental health and how craft promotes promotes um, like you know good good well being and that it's a great source of escape. I always feel like with what I do, because I've got a lot of people who come on on my workshops, um, they're using weaving as an escape, for instance. But because it's my career, it's my job, I don't find it uh, like down. <laughs> you know like I would never like weave in the evening to like you know do something a bit more relaxing so um I feel like I really need to take a bit more time out for hobbies um don't really have many hobbies at the moment other than walking my dogs <laughs> uh, but I kind of feel like at least like I'm still you know getting out and going for a walk um uh, but because of the nature of what's been go going on over the last year um, I've got a little one. She's 19 months old. Childcare has been, become increasingly difficult because of COVID. Um, you know, we're coming out of that now, which is great. She does go to nursery. Um, but I just find when I'm not working, I just want to spend as much time with her as possible. And it just doesn't really leave me much time to, to paint, unfortunately. And I keep looking at models that I really like. And I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, no, paint what you've got. <laughs> and you've not painted for so long. So don't buy anything new because that's that's always a, a warhammer crime isn't it just to keep buying new things that we we don't need um and i also think as well like i'm i'm long-sighted um when i focus my eyes on things for quite a long time like weaving for instance you know at the end of the day eight nine hours i sometimes work 10 hour days and i've got a big project on and i i just my eyes by the end of it i do not want to concentrate on painting and strain my eyes further so I just want to like close them slightly. we've all got that um that big pile of shame which which fluctuates doesn't it and you when you've got that pain in to do um I, I'm totally hands up guilty of that I've got some of that right now yeah yeah so unfortunately the hobby department it's it's definitely I'm not even a lie it's lacking a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel like um because my business is still quite young, I'm really grateful that in a short space of time, it's become quite successful. So I'm obviously extremely grateful for that, grateful to my clients for supporting me. Um, it's just not left me with a lot of free time. I think when you set up a business, um, it's, it's your baby and you put everything into it. It's not, you know, you kind of 37, 40 hour week. Um, I'm looking at emails, replying to emails at like 10 o'clock at night, six o'clock in the morning. Um, and you just end up putting all of your you know all of your drive and passion into that so unfortunately it hasn't left much space for for anything else but i do hope to be back with lady hammer when things are a little bit more chill um i'm doing a blood bowl event uh at crit hit in liverpool um in july so that's that's going to be good so i i am still i am still hobby here kind of <laughs> but I'll be back i'll be back when i've got more time yeah it's one of them things that i think lady hammer for anybody who doesn't know um i'll let you explain a little bit about lady hammer and how that came about yeah of course so uh lady hammer came about because um i've been painting well i've been painting warhammer on and off since i was in my teens and uh over the last definitely you know over the last kind of 
five, six years. And with the increase of how much people are using platforms like Instagram, I've noticed a huge rise in the amount of women who paint, which is amazing. When I first started painting Warhammer, there really wasn't a lot of women who painted. There wasn't, I didn't know any. Um, I didn't know any women who played. And I'm generally, I've generally always been a kind of more male friend group orientated person anyway. So it didn't really bother me that not a lot of women painted or played Warhammer, but it was certainly something that I noticed. Um, so I kind of like dipped in and out of, of the painting, but um, yeah, like I, I did, I didn't do any for, for a really long time. And then, you know, got back into it. And it's just been something that kind of just come, come in and out of my life um, when I've had time and chance. But I, I think the idea of Lady Hammer was to create a platform for women to talk about their painting because although there are loads more women painting and playing Warhammer now, there still there still isn't loads. You know, let's face it, w women are still you know a, a minority in the hobby. So I thought it'd be great just to create a platform in which women could chat about their painting um, and create a space where they could have you know a little bit of time if they wish to to chat to me about their projects, what they're passionate about. Um, you know, what, what models they prefer, whether they're more into gaming, um, more into painting, playing, you know, floor, floor, whatever. So that was the idea of it, really. And I was I was just so happy that people were interested in Lady Hammer as well. And it, obviously, it wasn't just women either. You know, I was wondering what type of what type of interest will I get in this from this? Will it just be other women watching? How will this kind of, you know, how will this pan out? How will this um, how will this roll out? And it was great because I got, I mean, you know, you always get your odd person who's, you know, a bit of a arsehole, let's face it. <laughs> but primarily the reaction and the response that I got from Lady Hammer was amazing. And loads of great messages from women, men, um, you know, show, showing support for that. So uh, I think overall it was a really positive experience for me. And it also gave me a bit more confidence in public speaking as well, because I hadn't really done, when I was in Shetland uh, and, and when I worked in Aberdeen, I used to speak in public quite often. I used to go to seminars, I used to do trade shows, and I'd often be representing the business that I worked for. So I used to speak to people a lot and do a lot of presentations. I really got out of the hang of that. And I just, I wanted to get better at public speaking again. So it really helped me with that. And I remember my first Lady Hammer, I was like, absolutely, like, <laughs> I, was, I was really, really anxious. I oh, really nervy and so many people joined in and watched and it just felt it just felt really supportive and positive so i just yeah i just kept going it was fantastic it was an excellent series for anybody who didn't get the opportunity to watch the series they can re-watch the episodes which are live on your warhammer princess um instagram account and i just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for doing that because i don't think if it was not for Lady Hammer and getting inspired from you doing that series, I probably wouldn't have got to this point doing the road too because I really was thinking after my interview when you interviewed me, I was like, oh, that was so much fun. Like, I really enjoyed it. Let, let's do something. And I was just thinking, well, what can I do? Like, I don't know. I, I, Lady Hammer is its own thing. I've got so many different hobbies. And then I was thinking, you know what, Soddy, I'm going to do something. And, and here I am today. So I owe that to you. A, a huge thank you for giving me the confidence to go and do the public speaking that I'm doing now. So thank you very much. That's, that's lovely. You'll make me all red. Mm. <laughs> that's nice, though. Thank you. Um, and, you know, your series has, has been, they've been fantastic. And I've tuned in for a few. And yeah i'm just really happy that you know you're you're getting the the um the traffic that you deserve i think you deserve even more traffic if i'm quite honest so if anyone is watching this video now who follows me but not carrie and you should because it's great like you said um that you're talking to like a plethora of people about all different things it's not just about warhammer it's about different things that you're passionate about and like you said at the start um with your um with your fashion degree that you did uh sometimes you know what you've got more in common than you'd assume with somebody else and that's the great thing about it 
um, about about the sh you know the interviews that you've been doing. There's going to be other people that are interested in more than one topic, like Warhammer. You know, people who are interested in like uh, you did you did one with uh, with a tattoo artist, didn't you? Um, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that, for instance, you know, there's gonna people are gonna have more hobbies in common than just that. So I think it's a really it's a nice talking point. So well done you. Thank you very much, but thank thank you. Um we've got a few people mentioning in comments saying that Lady Hammer's totally changed their perspective on things. Thank you very much. There's people saying that it's totally changed their lives because they, they're now speaking to people who they would not have normally have spoke to beforehand. Um, and I can honestly back this up, like it opened a lot of doors for myself in terms of being able to speak to fellow hobbyists, um, not only just female hobbyists, male hobbyists or whatever people choose to identify as gender. It is irrelevant. It's all about the hobby, really, for, for the fact that I've been able to communicate with people here, which was great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think uh, yeah, it's really important that you mention that as well, because um you know, with with the Lady Hammer series, um, I did. You know, I, I did an interview when we did the uh, the the Lady Hammer event in Liverpool that I know you were hoping to come to but couldn't make. And I um I did the interview with uh with the charity in London that was based around female gaming, but also you know not to mention you know people also being involved with the lady hammer interviews um who identify as trans and non-binary as well i think that's a really important talking point too and um just to make things you know in inclusive which i i always found really important when doing those interviews um just a, a really fantastic platform to be able to speak to lots of people from different walks of life and i hope to get back to them soon i really do um but i'm looking forward to meeting up um with yourself um in a few weeks time now that we're allowed <laughs> yeah because i'd um i planned to go to the lady hammer event and i booked a hotel and had everything planned and then obviously lockdown hit where i am which is in the northeast um and i wasn't able to to travel down um but luckily the hotel said that i can obviously rearrange and i'm now booked into a tournament at crit hit which you introduced me to which is fantastic so yeah, I've also got um, Andy from Crit Hit coming on the series a little bit later on in the series. Um, I'm going to be speaking to Maya next week, who is going to be talking all about her road to the ITC, which is going to be a critical hit as well. So that'll be fantastic. Amazing. I absolutely, yeah. You, you, Maya, cannot wait to see you both. It'll be fantastic. And talking to Andy will be a great one too. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, for anybody who, who um, wants to follow along with the rest of your journeys, could you tell us a little bit more what the future holds for KSD and potentially Lady Hammer and obviously the Liverpool Weaving Company? Yeah, so I really hope to get um, to get back into Lady Hammer soon. It's just been a work-life balance issue. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back into that. Um, hoping that once everything's kind of calmed down a little bit with work, probably after the summer, um, I'll be getting back to interviewing some really interesting people again. Um, I've got some people lined up. So I've got a list ready for when I do get back in. So um, that'll be fantastic. Also, we'll be streaming the um, the Blood Bowl event as well in July. Can't remember the date of it for the top of my head. Um, I'm just going to call it Mum Brain. It's Mum Brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liverpool <laughs> Week Company uh, over the summer, now that I can get back out there, I'm going to be getting back out there to lots of different locations. Uh, I'll be teaching my, one of my, yeah, it'll be like the first in-person workshop of the year in June in Runcorn in Cheshire and then I'm on to Make in Liverpool, Make North Docks which is a fantastic creative collective in the city centre so I'll be teaching there too in June and I will be in Snaith at Yorkshire Ales in July teaching a weave and ale so if anyone's based in Yorkshire come and have a bevy and weave a wall hanging and it'll be fun. That sounds amazing. Yeah. That's totally up my street. <laughs> yeah, the, the summer's always a really busy period for me because you've got a lot of fashion companies who are getting their um, their season collections ready for autumn, winter, for all the fashion shows. So um, I have just started a, um, a fabric run that's on behind me of linen 
which is a 150 meter order. It's a big one. Um, it takes me, I can usually weave about 3.8 meters a day. So weaving this 150 meters is going to be a mammoth project. So that is practically my life now for about 12 weeks. And then after that, uh, I've got a bespoke tweed for an American client based in Vermont. So I'll be on to that straight after. So if you want to, uh, if you want to have a, have a check out of my stories on my Instagram, I'll be put, posting loads of stuff about that. I've got to, um, I've got, I do an internship program as well, not to mention. So if anyone knows any up and coming textile design students who need some weaving experience, um, I'm, my doors are always open for that type of thing. So you can apply for internship schemes with me. I've got an intern arriving on Monday from Manchester Metropolitan Uni. So I've got a, uh, I've got a new helper from Manchester School of Art. Um, so yeah, my doors are always open for anyone who is wanting to learn more about weave up close and personal. That's amazing. That's really, really wonderful to hear because I think there's not many people who would be so forthcoming about that. I think it's from back when I was at university, I really struggled to to kind of find people who would take on interns. Um, so yeah, that's great. If anybody's watching who's at Northumbria University, please give Kirsty a shout because she's obviously a specialist in the industry. So please do give her a shout. Yeah, I think it's really it's really important to um, run internship programs. And my previous workplaces have, have always done that. Um, I did inter internship programs ten years ago when I was starting out, and um, with ne with weaving as well being the the niche craft that it is. I think if you can open your doors and you know take a couple of people on over the summer so they can learn more and they get that proper hands on experience. You know, obviously universities are fantastic and there's lots of um, there's lots of practical elements in there, but physically learning skills of how a business works i i think i think you know hands-on experience is is always extremely useful so i i think internship programs are really important to teach i mean it's, it's essentially the future you know that's what that's what that's what our students are um if i can take a couple of people on over the summer then i always will and um, unfortunately last year was cut short and my uh, my intern had to leave so uh, make, making up for it this year I've got three students over the course of the summer from various universities um, two are from Manchester and one of them is from Nottingham Trent and she's coming at the end of the summer so excellent it sounds like you've got lots to keep you busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I kind of want to ask you one one final thing before we we wrap up because time's going really fast but I wanted to ask you, um, what positives have you got and or taken from starting your own business or um, taking part in your own series? Uh, I think positives I've took from from this experience is you know it, it's it's hard work setting something up for yourself, but there's a lot of positives to it. You know, I'm able to this my studio here. Um, this is I've got at the back of my house like a, like a big. It's like a like a double if not maybe triple sized garage and I've converted this to be my studio so I can work you know I can work right practically like my front door is like there so I can pop in I can see I can see my little one I can see Delilah when I have breaks um there's been so many positives to you know going at it myself a little bit difficult at times definitely not without its challenges um if you're not feeling too well or you're you know if you're feeling ill or you want a holiday a little break and you've got a big project on no one's going to do the work for you and you have to just keep on going <laughs> and it can be a little exhausting at times um but yeah like the, some of the positives that that i've taken from this is just it, it, it's shown me that I am capable of, of, of you know, of, of giving myself that that type of that type of life where I can, you know, control my own hours um, and, and pick the clients that I want. I, instead of, you know, uh, I feel at some of my jobs in the past, like I often found myself designing things because I had to. Um, it maybe wasn't something, and I, I suppose you sometimes get that. For instance, with with Warhammer and commission painting, that maybe someone's painted a commission that they don't actually really enjoy and they're doing it because you know it's bread and butter at the end of the day so um there's a lot of positives that have that have come from it and then as well like definitely with with the lady hammer series so many positives came from that like i was saying about um my public speaking and being able to practice that um also just meeting so many fantastic new people speaking to people from you know not just different parts of the uk but different parts of the world 
um that is that was definitely a, a huge positive for me and, and something I found thoroughly enjoyable excellent I, it's so great to hear that as well and um you are a big I'd say an advocate for mental health and it's been uh, mental health awareness week so you mentioned there's a lot of women doing a lot of your um, workshops as a positive experience there as well so big kudos for you to t for running those workshops on top of the fact that it's been covid and you've got a full-time um business to run on your own um so yeah big kudos to you for that thank you so much carrie i really appreciate that yeah it is mental health aware well it's mental health awareness well it was mental health awareness week wasn't it i think it's mental health awareness month in the states i've still been hashtagging mental health awareness month on my posts um so i don't think it really matters where in the world we live you know um so i've still been posting a lot of stuff about mental health awareness um month uh my um i sell weaving kits where you can buy a start your own weaving kit um and at the moment i, I choose a charity a different charity every now and then so at the moment five percent from my start weaving kit sales go to ptsd uk which i think is a really important charity and they do amazing work with people so um i'm trying to give a little give a little back as well thank you so much for coming on the show tonight it's been absolutely incredible to speak to you thank you so much to everybody who's tuned in tonight please do follow along the liverpool weaving company and Warhammer Princess, because it's an exclusive. There's going to be a return at some point. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you. thank you so much. I've it's had, had a good chat to you. It's been great. So thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me on as a guest. It's been lovely. And um, this is um, this is the first uh, interview I've done. I've done one. Um, I did one IGTV when I. Um, did a pro like a pro like a new colorway a new product release um a little while ago but this is the first time i've actually chatted with someone since i did lady hammer so it's been great and really refreshing so thank you no problem at all thank you for joining and i feel privileged to have you on um next week i'm going to be back at seven o'clock on thursday and i'm going to be speaking to maya rose all about her journey to ict um and yeah we're going to chew the fat have a chin wag and talk tournaments um, so thank you that'll be a great one yeah yeah i'm really excited for it so thank you very much for joining everybody i will see you next week thank you Kirsty. thank you thank you for having bye. me you're welcome bye, bye.